What do these bacteria, sunflowers, flamingos, and people have in common? Well, they're all living things, which means they're all made of cells, which means that they're all made of the same molecules of life. And in this video, we're going to explore the molecules or chemicals that you'll find in living things. Quick review about cells. All cells contain the elements schnapps in very high abundance. In other words, they're mostly made of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. But you won't find these elements hanging around all by themselves in a cell. You will find them bonded together to form certain molecules, specifically water, lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids. And these are the molecules that we're going to explore in this video. As you're watching the video and learning about these molecules, keep in mind that many molecules uh, can form complex molecules called polymers. So building blocks are known as monomers, and the complex form, when you put the monomers together, are polymers. So let's start with water, which is the most abundant molecule in cells and is inorganic, meaning it doesn't have carbon and hydrogen. Water has some pretty magical properties all because it is polar or charged. And the reason that it's polar is that oxygen and hydrogen share electrons unequally. And this means that oxygen, who's kind of greedy, has a slightly negative charge, while hydrogen ends up with a slightly positive charge. And because each water molecule has a positive end and a negative end, they will form these weak hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. The positive hydrogens will attract to the negative oxygens on another molecule. And this gives water some important properties. We're not going to go into all of them here, but one thing that it can do is it can dissolve other things that are charged. For example, salt. Here is sodium and chloride. Everybody knows if you drop some salt in water, it will dissolve. Well, the reason is because the positive oxygens attract to the negative chloride while the negative oxygens attract to the positive sodiums. So water is known as the solvent of life because molecules and cells are dissolved in water. And water is necessary for most of the metabolic reactions in cells to occur. And you'll find out why in just a moment. So let's move on to the other four, which are all organic. And we're going to start with nucleic acids because this is probably the most famous of all the molecules, DNA. DNA has a double helix shape. I like to think of it as a spiral staircase or a twisted ladder. Now, the railings of the ladder are made up of sugars and phosphates. The rungs of the ladder are made up of nitrogenous bases. These are just chemicals that contain nitrogen. And there's four that are found in DNA. Adenine, A, cytosine, C, thymine, T, and guanine, G. Now let's zoom in a little bit so we can see how DNA is put together. Here is our double helix shape. There's our sugar phosphate backbone. There's our base pairs. Now if we zoom in on this, we can see how DNA is put together. And we can see that the monomer of DNA is known as a nucleotide. And then this consists of a phosphate, that's the P, a sugar, that's the spring, and the nitrogenous base. So all three of those together make up one nucleotide, or one monomer. Now, how many monomers are in this particular DNA molecule? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, plus five on the other side make, makes ten. Of course, a full DNA molecule will have millions and millions of nucleotides. And although DNA is the most famous nucleic acid, there's another one known as RNA that's also important and we'll learn about it later in the year. What is the function of DNA? Well, short story, it's the genetic code. But what that really means is that the order of bases, those A's, T's, C's, and G's, provide the instructions for your body to build proteins, a different molecule. And it's the proteins that determine all our traits. So your unique DNA sequence is what gives you your unique features. Let's talk about proteins then, since they are so closely related to nucleic acids. Proteins are also organic. They've got carbon and hydrogen, plus some other stuff. Here's a simplified picture of a protein. The monomer of a protein is an amino acid. So each of these colored 
circles is an amino acid. And there's a lot of different amino acids. They have three letter nicknames. You don't have to know them now. You don't even have to copy these nicknames into your notes. The important thing is to know that amino acids will bond together to form polypeptides. Uh, so this is a polypeptide. And then to make a fully functional protein, the polypeptide has to fold into a 3D shape. And then it can do its job. And proteins have a lot of jobs. Now, here is a more accurate picture of the structure, because I'm sure some of you really want to know what an amino acid looks like. So here's a single amino acid. It's got a carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogens, carbon, oxygen, and then some more carbon and hydrogens. Uh, so this particular polypeptide has five amino acids in it, but a full protein would have hundreds of amino acids. So what are the jobs of a protein? Well, some of them are messengers, like insulin and other hormones. Some of them provide structure, like the collagen in your skin. Some of them, like hemoglobin in your red blood cells, transport materials. Others are enzymes, and get things going. And some provide defense. These small antibodies are proteins that will fight off uh, infectious diseases. Carbohydrates. This one you may be familiar with. These are organic. Um, and one thing that defines them is that they have a ring shaped. Now you don't have to make this exact uh, sketch in your notes, but note that a monosaccharide is the monomer of carbohydrates. And it just consists of a ring of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. This, for example, is glucose. Now, if we put a bunch of these monosaccharides together, we get a polysaccharide, such as starch. Now, what do carbohydrates do? Well, some of them provide structure for cells, and I'll show you that in a second. But most people know carbohydrates for providing energy, and that's probably their most important function. However, uh, certain organisms, such as crustaceans, like crusty the crab, uh, have an exoskeleton made of the carbohydrate chitin. Meanwhile, plants have the carbohydrate cellulose in their cell walls, and that hold, helps hold them upright. Last but not least are lipids. Lipids are organic, containing carbon and hydrogen. And don't panic when you see the structure, and you don't need to copy every single atom down. But note that there's a general pattern. What you are looking at right now is a fat molecule. Fat is a lipid. And you've probably noticed that it kind of has the shape of a letter E. Well, the long parts of the E are fatty acids, and the backbone of the E is glycerol. So if you put a glycerol together with three fatty acids, you get fat. And fatty acids, unlike water, are nonpolar or uncharged. And I like to remember the function of lipids as this E stands for energy. All of these carbon-hydrogen bonds store tons and tons of energy. But that's not the only function of lipids. They also provide insulation and cushion. Uh, some hormones, like estrogen and testosterone, are made of lipids. And uh, Long-term energy storage, which we mentioned, this squirrel is getting very prepared for winter. And then finally, we'll find out in a few weeks that the cell membrane surrounding cells is made up of fatty acids and cholesterol, and both of those are lipids. So, one last thing. We said at the very beginning that water was necessary for chemical reactions. Well, specifically, it's necessary to build and to break down those molecules we just learned about. One process, known as dehydration synthesis, is used to build larger molecules. And it's called dehydration because essentially what you do is you remove a water molecule from two monomers. And by doing so, you allow those monomers to bond together. So water is removed, bonds form, and you synthesize or build a bigger molecule. The opposite reaction is called hydrolysis. In hydrolysis, we use water, hydro, to split molecules, like this means split. So here we're going to add water, and it's going to help break that bond and split it into smaller units, such as breaking down glycogen into glucose for energy. 
And that concludes our tour of the molecules of light. Make sure you've got questions, strike themes in your notes, and don't forget to do the poll.